didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you give me a hand with the paint, I could do a little before it's too dark. I went to get a, halo a ha halogen, a halo I can't, halogen, halogen, I don't know, maybe one of them two are right. Like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit my help at Shisuma, but it really makes me feel that the festival is such a big project that even a pair of hands is needed. Why not? I'm not really sure if I can be of any help though. It's just mixing some paints, you can do that, probably. Do you have a motor control problem, like, you know, those people who had some? Cerebral palsy, maybe? Nah, not that I know of. I get it. Hard thing has nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for some reason. <laughs> it's me. I'm sly. Stop looking at me. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Let's do it then. So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between her toes on her bare right foot. I open a few cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paint flows lazily from the can to the bowl like syrup. The mix I mix in creating funny, hypnotic looking swirl patterns that melt quickly into each other to form a new monotone who or hue. Who? <laughs> Rin says to work every now and then asks me for a hand with something or the other. Hmm. Finding different brushes is easy enough. But mixing the paint to be exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last millimeter before she's satisfied, but her instructions are obscured at best. Add half a splash of green. I crouch down to pick up the can of bright green. The other green, this green. I carefully pour some of the other green into the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash, more white. Is green good color to add? No idea, you're the artist here. A hint smile appears in the corner of her mouth. Aw. Uh -uh. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay because I just got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly whiter. That's not good. It has to be like, like the color when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of life in your dream, but you can't remember it. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe it's yellow. Despite the impossibility of mixing color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense that would be in possessor on me, I find myself enjoying more than I thought I would. Seeing the pain being born on the plastic wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing pain and crouching down on the paving and just looking at her work. I feel slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary int intimacy, but Rain doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire presence emits, emits a complete different air as she painstakingly works the details, adding layers of paint on top of the other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall and add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face, oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us would say a word for the longest time. And even though short discussions soon evolve into short hand, uh, shorten both of, wait, let me read this again. Even though short discussions soon evolve into short hand, both of us developing an issue weird improv code words of very paints and hues. As if there was some need of concerned words and breaths and sounds. Or if there was need of it. Oh, it's going nighttime now. We stay in there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. Now it just completely goes black. Oh snap! What is this chapter? Let's see. Did I go to bed? The sound of alarm pulls me out of fitful slumber and into an unpleasant state of awakefulness. I linger under the blanket for a few minutes, gathering the energy to rise while making excuses for why I already haven't. Honestly, I wouldn't mind staying here for all day. School is surprisingly exhausting after a long pause, and the culture shock still has not faded, I think. Despite getting an impression that skipping class is easier, I don't think they are going to let me get away that easily. 
And the nurse is bound to keep bringing down my neck with the talk of exercising as well. So eventually I do rise up, swallow the morning medications and put my old soccer clothing. Thanks to my condition, I was exempt from taking part in gym classes at Yamaku, so I didn't get issue with a gym outfit. And I would order some to cover much, such contingency, but wearing my old soccer clothes is kind of nostalgic. I can't use them for th that anymore, so maybe they can get a new life this way. A bit like me. After all, if I'm going to start taking care of myself, I can't afford to slack around. I'll start from the basics. Basics which include keeping the rest of my body in shape, along with that little I can to do straight my heart. Strengthen my heart. Maybe then I can go back to something approaching a normal life, or at least something where I'm less likely to fall over dead at any minute. I'm surprised to discover that I'm not the only one present at the track. Not just that, but it's a face I've seen before. The pathetic leg girl who bowled over me in the hallway yesterday is running on the track lightly like half mechanical, like a half mechanical cell. What's her name again? It was a short one, but I can't... I can't remember it. She seems to be running laps at somewhat easy low, her pathetic legs clanking rhythmically on the hard track surface. I wonder what reason she has for running this early in the morning. Maybe something akin to mine and the nurses oppressing the poor girl to jog just like he's oppressing me. I certainly wouldn't be here if I weren't for my health and his prompting me to do so. And even with the things being like they are, it's only because I wanted to get out of the way earlier. The fact that I would be less likely to encounter someone, someone who witnessed my pitiful attempts to get in shape was merely a happy accident. I leave, but it seems that my for, former asylum knows oh, my former assailant knows me on her last lap. She waves at me cheerfully and jogs over. Good morning. Your name is Asal, right? She grins, seemingly pleased that she remembered my name. You may not remember me. Emmy, I knocked you over in the hallway yesterday? How could I forget such a blunt introduction? Emmy has the decency to look vaguely apologetic, apologetic for a moment before giggling. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that again. Hmm, well, as long as you don't make a habit of it, suppose that will be fine. Great! I'm not sure she realized I was joking. So the spy console thing the nurse was talking about is actually you? That's right! Oh. I was expecting someone from the nursing staff, to be honest. Why are you just saying that I don't look like I could be a spy? No, this is more like a relief. I was afraid he would be someone to watch every my, my every move. Unless you're here to do that, exactly. No, I'm here for my own reasons. The nurse just asked me if I had seen a messy haired transfer student who looked like he's kind of lost around the track. So why are you down here? Emmy strikes a dramatic pose. Training! For what? Track! Ah, oh, I see you're in the track team then. Emmy nods enthusiast enthusiastically. I can't say enthusiastically. There you go. Ha! English, that's fun! <laughs> yep! I'm one of the better runners too. And modest about it too. Doesn't sound too modest to me actually. Hey, you should join up. It's good exercise, you know. I think that much activity is probably out of the question for me. Nah, I'm not sure that I really like running at, at that much. Plus, I'm just not into organized sports, you know. It's true, I never even really got that much into soccer. I mean, I run around with my friends and all, but that was really the only reason I ever played. It wasn't for the glory to be found on the field, for sure. Emmy seems to understand my meaning. I see, I see. Not that into the whole organization thing. But now that you're here, I guess we're gonna go run together, right? Huh? Uh, I guess. Emmy seems pleased. Are you going to warm up? Real men don't warm up. Oh no, you always should warm up. Bad his out. She scolds me enthusiastically, but then smiles and leans closer. I hate warming up too. She laughs suddenly. Heck, I don't even have to stretch my legs. <laughs> I love the fact they make a joke about such a fucked up thing. Heck, I don't even have to stretch my legs. As 
to confirm her statement, she bounces up and down a couple times, giving me a passing impression of tan standing a pair of springs. Her leg blades seem to be quite elastic. Let's go. So we both take off on track, and I can merely see that she wasn't lying about being a good, being good at running. Emmy moves fluidly, throwing herself into the run with some sort of wild abandon. I find myself concentrating more on running properly. Hands spread right, and something about hitting uh, on the ball of your feet rather than the heels. I try to match my stride to Emmy's, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently, I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with that sometime. I'm really not feeling up to more than a couple laps today, and slow to a walk pretty quickly. <sighs> Emmy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice me. I stop until she passes me a second time. She quick quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to my own somewhat gasping demeanor. <sighs> Finish already? I hang my head ruefully? Ruefully? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not very, I'm not in very good shape right now. Emmy, no whoop, that was a burp again. Emmy nods and then grins at me again. She seems to do a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is you're sorry, right? Next time, you have to try to hold out a lot, out longer and then longer and longer. Eventually, it'll be great. I'll keep that in mind. But I think right now I'm going to get ready for class. Shouldn't you? Emmy shrugs unconcernedly. Nah, I got plenty of time. I know she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? Another scare, another careless rug? Not really. I gotta finish my routine. See you later, Hisao. Uh, yeah, see ya. I'm not sure whether this morning experience was a success or a failure, but I'll admit that I do feel slightly good about getting out there this morning. And like Emmy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice, at least, uh, to feel I've taken somewhat semblance of control over my own health. I'll have to try to keep up with this. I'll have to try to keep this up. I will change what I read every now and then, so I do apologize if I'm not saying exactly what the title says, but it's, I like to go with the flow. I think we're going with a good flow so far. It's a lot of talking in this. <laughs> a lot of reading and talking. It's this actually could tell show you to an extent. I feel like it's become like story time with Sly. You guys tell me in the comments. I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm tired from all the running. I just want to unwind, but I don't want to break my slowly build building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. After taking a long shower, anyways, I dry myself off to get out of the stall to put on my clothes. Out of nowhere, a shadow appears within the mist, looming, radiant, malicious intent. It's, it's, it bursts through the fog. What the fuck? Kenji! Kenji! Come! Kenji! Come on! Have a little leaf on your, your ding dong! What's up? What are you doing here? What the hell? You scaring me. What's your problem? I should be asking you that. I've been looking for you all over the place, man. What do you mean all over the place? I want to ask if you've been looking for me, that, stark naked, but hold my tongue back. I finally realize I'm still naked too and quickly hold up my shirt in front of me, but Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. His glasses are fogged up, but then why does he wipe them off? Is his vision so bad that it's like a perpetual scene? Perpetually seen through fog. You know your room, and yeah, that's it. Hey, I mean, I still have to get up, though. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? Kenji, what the fuck, dude? He puts an innocent face and looks away, trying to be very hard to look very casual. It doesn't work, and he's transparent as his window pane side glass. Mm, talking neutrally like this, wearing nothing feels awkward. Actually, somehow, it's even more awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't even see me being naked. Say nothing of the fact that he's naked as well. I try to brush the feeling off with little success. Money? Uh, sure.
Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you guys really enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. It shows your support. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this, then subscribe so you never miss a video. Woo!